It is Thursday, August 26th. This is Jaguars Happy Hour. And now, a guy who says he still sees okay, yet the font keeps getting bigger, <laughs> J.P. Shadrick! Yeah, time marches on, and uh, I am due a visit to the optometrist. Welcome in. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on this Thursday afternoon. It's preseason week three. My name's J.P. Shadrick. We've got a busy show ahead a quarterback has been named for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We'll hear from Trevor Lawrence and get his thoughts on being named the starter for the Jags, Urban Meyer as well. The offense is still looking for the end zone, at least the starting offense. They have not found pay dirt in the preseason. They would like to find pay dirt before the preseason is over. We'll hear from Trevor on that as well. A little defensive talk coming up later. The preseason week three approach especially after the injury to Travis Etienne Jr. Does it change at all for Urban Meyer? All signs point to no. We'll uh, hear from the head coach on that also. Jeff Lagerman joins us at 4.15 today. We'll get his thoughts on everything going on. Network coverage of Jaguars Happy Hour at 5 o'clock. We'll also hear again from Jeff Darlington, who joined the Jags Drive Time Show this morning and Bucky Brooks earlier this week. Jaguars analyst and uh, get his thoughts on what the Jags should do or could do or might do or might not do now without Travis Etienne around. Let's get to today's news. The Jags back on the practice field again today. The final official training camp practice in 2021. The last one opened full-time to the media that were assembled today. Tomorrow it's only open for 30 minutes at the start of practice, and that will be the regular game week routine. That starts tomorrow on the uh, practice fields here. Uh, last week, the game prep week started for the Jaguars, so they were looking at the other teams, um, you know, uh, doing offense, defense against the other team's scheme or some sort of scheme, a preseason scheme. Same idea this week for Urban Meyer and the coaching staff installing some plans against the Cowboys' looks in practice. Well, they, they haven't found the end zone yet in the starting offense, of course. The approach this week likely to see some time from the starters early, it feels like, find some success, and then maybe get in the end zone and get them out of there. And it sounds like Urban uh, feels the same way. E even with ETN's injury the other day on Monday night, you know, uh, once a player's game ready, he said, it's done for the preseason for them. But then he listed only about four or five players that were game ready. That means there's about 75 others that I guess are not, and you will see a good amount of those on Sunday in Dallas when the Jaguars face the Cowboys. The biggest news this week, of course, Trevor Lawrence named the starting quarterback by head coach Urban Meyer. The announcement came down Wednesday officially, and Urban explained. I did, but, uh, you know, it is, uh, it's a three-week preseason as opposed to a four. We do have the bye week afterwards, but I think uh, as we continue, it's uh, a matter of a little bit of repetition now. So we wanted him to earn it as we do with every position. We felt he has after the last uh, nice performance was, uh, it was good, obviously not great, but we you know, didn't run the ball very well. But, uh, but I kind of in my mind had that as a, after the second preseason that we kind of have to, to get someone ready to play in three weeks. Yeah, three weeks away, one more week of prep to go, getting ready for a game this Sunday, and then two weeks down. Not sure of the practice schedule yet and the uh, the dead period, or if you will, between the final preseason game and regular season week one. You know it'll be uh, likely that the week of week one, Monday, Tuesday is a player's off day, and then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But the week before that is the one that's a little bit up in the air still. Uh, either way, it's three weeks to get him ready now for week one starting with the prep this week. Of course, uh, Trevor Lawrence, as you would expect, is excited to move forward. Yeah, it was good, man. We, we talked about our QB room, and, um, man, we, just have a, we have a great group. So I'm, I'm really excited for the opportunity. Uh, it doesn't really change anything, though. Still got the same task in front of us. Got to get a lot better um, individually as a team, as an offense. So just looking forward to going to work this week. You know, it brings some clarity, which is nice going forward. But... It really doesn't change much. But, yeah, I'm really excited for the opportunity, grateful for it. Trevor Lawrence on Monday night made his uh, Jaguars national TV debut, if you will, and went 14 of 23, 113 yards. He was sacked once, a 73.3 rating, ran one time for nine yards and was um, 
you know, kind of helicoptered down like John Elway, it felt like, on that play. It was third down. He wanted to get that first down, he said. You can hey, you can argue that one all day. It's the preseason, but that's Trevor for you. He's going to go after it. And so far in two games, 184 yards through the air, he's been sacked three times in the preseason. He was hit a good bit in last week's game, too, and that was a, l- a little bit of a concern, obviously, after the game. I think he was officially hit by the Saints defense four times in the uh, in the book after the game. I think he was pushed another time, sacked once, uh, hit on that run. So it uh, took a little bit of contact last week. The other really big news this week, of course, running back Travis Etienne Jr. is now done for the year. He's on injured reserve, reported to be a Liz Frank issue in his left foot requiring surgery, and it's obviously significant uh, because he's down for the year. Urban Meyer discussed his absence Wednesday. Yeah, that was a shot in the jaw, that one. Um, it was really coming on in practice, and we're, you know, uh, he saw his big playability in the practice, not in the game yet. Um, tough injury. Uh, how do we fill that? You know, that's, we're still in that conversation right now. Now in the second hour of Jaguars Happy Hour today, we'll hear from NFL media analyst Bucky Brooks and Jaguars.com senior writer John Ozier and get their thoughts off yesterday's Huddle Up show and discuss how the Jags can either fill that role or figure out something else and, and what the options could be for that running back slash weapon position that Urban Meyer had in mind with ETN, who is no longer around. A big blow for this offense. Now to the final piece of the offense in the preseason, scoring points, namely touchdowns. They haven't done that with the first team yet in the first two preseason games. And the quarterback says, all is well, don't panic. Yeah, I mean, it's it's frustrating, but also we just got to stick together and keep playing. Um, we're going to figure it out, and I, I'm really confident in that. So we got a bunch of guys that are – that are putting the work in, and we're going to do everything it takes to, to get on the right track. So, you know, I'm confident in that. I'm, I'm not worried. Obviously, you'd like to score more points than we have, for sure. But um, all stuff that we can build on, and we know what we need to get better at. So it's just a matter of, of doing it and going out there and practicing it. Urban Meyer was a little more straightforward and to the point than Trevor on this uh, instance, saying we need to score some damn points. And that was the sentence that Urban Meyer said the other day when he was asked about it. Uh, obviously, it will be a focus this week to get some success early and get in the end zone. Uh, they did have a couple of sustained drives right before halftime last week, which was good to see. Uh, they settled for field goal one of the times and then missed a field goal another. Let's move over to the defensive side of the football now. The Saints offense, of course, of course scored twice with their starting group with Jameis Winston uh, making the start. Uh, Taysom Hill got some time later with the first team in that game. Marquez Callaway caught two touchdown passes with incredible catches both times. The coverage wasn't too bad, but they just couldn't finish at the moment of truth. Shaq Griffin in the front left corner of the end zone, and then later Griffin and Tyson Campbell in the middle of the end zone. Uh, Safety Rayshon Jenkins is in that defensive backfield as well for the Jaguars, and he enters his fifth NFL season. And we heard from him after the game in New Orleans, and he was asked what he really looks for in teammates during training camp. My, my thing is, in the preseason, I'm looking f- uh, more for, um, you know, like warriors or, 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 you know, those dogs that I need to really just um, um, uh, have on my team. In the preseason, you know, there's not a lot of plays being called. Um, you got so many guys in, so you just never, you don't know who's here or who's not, you know. So it's just a filling out process right now. Um, I mean, it's a huge difference from now to the regular season. I mean, it, it, it took way d- a huge difference, you know. So, I mean, uh, we still got some work to do, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, we, we still trying to just fit in those missing pieces right now. And, um, you know, preseason's a perfect time to do that. He's one of the players that Urban Meyer listed as game ready the other day. So uh, you might not see much of Rayshon Jenkins this Sunday in Dallas against the Cowboys. The other safety spot, though, is uh, still up for grabs in the latest depth chart. There are still those four co-number ones. That was as of Tuesday, at least. We'll uh, discuss all that coming up with Lagerman here in just a little bit. It is the last chance this week for players to show something on tape. The bubble guys on the roster, it's a huge week for them because it's their last opportunity, and then we'll see what happens. The final cuts from 80 down to 53 are this coming Tuesday with just a little less than two weeks to go until opening day. So, uh, as we said, that, that battle should be solidified after this weekend at Strong Safety, some other spots that are up for grabs. 
uh, you know, as of uh, the last depth chart on Tuesday. What kind of player, though, does Urban Meyer want to see? He broke that down earlier this week. I just got to keep swinging, man. We're going to swing. The, I just told them I'm looking for uh, fighters and I'm looking for competitors. We will have a locker room full of competitors, and I, I think we got a bunch of them. Um, but I'm learning a lot about them, like they're learning, learning a lot about us. Yeah, looking for fighters, got to keep swinging, all that, and you got to do a lot of different things, especially if you're on the bubble this week. And, you know, if if you're on the bubble this week, you've probably performed at least pretty well the first couple of games. Those those reps certainly matter, I think, a little bit more than the practice field reps. And then you got to, I think, step out and have a day on Sunday in Dallas. And it's not just in one spot. It's on special teams, too, and that's – of. Uh, a very great importance to Urban Meyer. What can you contribute? How much can you increase your value to this football team and to yourself? And we'll be watching that, of course, this coming Sunday in Dallas, the final chance for a lot of these guys to uh, – it's a huge cut, too. I mean, and now, of course, last year it was from 90 to 53 in one big swoop. This year they're paring it down, you know, five the first cut to 85, 85 to 80 this past Tuesday. And then now the big one coming up. This next Tuesday, and uh, it's it's a tough one, and it's the first time that Urban Meyer's really had to go through something like that. He talked about that a couple of weeks ago. The one this next Tuesday is the real big one because these guys have been with you really the whole time through, and you got to tell some guys that they're not good enough to make your football team. Uh, but one last chance under the bright lights this Sunday in Dallas. We've got putting ahead. We're just getting started on Jaguars Happy Hour. Jeff Logman joins us in a moment. We'll hear more from Urban Meyer in just a little bit. The second hour of Jaguars Happy Hour on the network coming up at 5 o'clock. Jeff Darlington, Bucky Brooks, and plenty more ahead. Season tickets, single game tickets, and group tickets. Be a part of the new era of Jaguars football and own it. Visit jaguars.com slash tickets. Or call 904-633-2000. We're off and running. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented in part by TIAA Bank. Created to serve, built to perform. Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com your family isn't like anyone else's your home shouldn't be either at dreamfinders homes you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30 plus communities in northeast florida choose from luxury single family homes or maintenance free townhomes from the 200s dreamfinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle to find out more call 904-738-0165 or visit dreamfindershomes.com If something's been hurting, aching, or bothering you, don't ignore it any longer. It's time to take care of your health again. It's time to make an appointment with a Baptist Health primary care doctor or specialist. Call 904-202-4U to schedule a virtual visit or see a doctor in person at a Baptist Health location. The time for better health is here. Call 904-202-4U or visit GetBetterJacks.com. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. So, it's happy hour. Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. 
Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at local liquor stores, restaurants, and the Jaguar Stadium. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer. All named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. Because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few, they're built for America. Ford SUVs, drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 520. The station that the Jaguars listen to, 1010XL. Home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think it's all the position. You know, what our job, the term that I've always used is game ready. Once someone's game ready, they're done. You know, we're, we're a young team right now. You know, Linder to me is a guy that I'm not in, in a panic because I saw what he was like before he got hurt, and, and he's going to be 100% by game time. Uh, Marvin, I'm getting to the point where he's game ready. <clears throat> and uh, but other than that, it's a young team. You know, it's a young team. Miles Jack, by the way, played outstanding. You know, he's getting close to being game ready. Head coach Urban Meyer earlier this week, and welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. Veterans, choose VA for the benefits you've earned. Choose Visit choose.va.gov. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman joining us now here on the program. Good afternoon, Jeffrey. Hey, J.P. It's a great day, man. It is a great day, and we're talking Jaguar football. It's always a great day, and... It's preseason week three, so we're getting ever closer to the regular season. That'll be a, a greater day, I think, once it's for real. Um, sure, sure. It's, and, and, it, and it's a great day because today is the eleventh birthday of my beautiful daughter. Oh, Taylor. happy birthday! So Taylor. happy birthday to her, and she's an amazing young young girl. Yes, she is, and uh, so excited to celebrate the day with her. It's pretty good. Uh, what kind of cake? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. That's well, a good question. I mean, need to work on that. Yeah, well, we, 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 I'm, I'm <laughs> sure her mama's got it covered. I'm sure she does. What does game ready mean to you? Urban just talked I, about I, it. I think it's self-explanatory to some extent, but I think it also kind of goes to what the coach's confidence is in a player because that's from Urban's perspective. And he wants to have a comfort level with, with the players to where he terms them game ready. Look, is Marvin Jones nearly game ready? I mean, this is year 10 for Marvin Jones, uh, Jr. Not now. There's a problem. I mean, he's problem game there. ready. Yeah. He's not nearly game ready. He's ready to go. Is Urban Meyer game ready? That's a great question, right? I mean, well, I mean, he, has, he hasn't coached yeah. in the National Football League level. Right. Uh, so he's probably not – quite game ready yet but I'm sure he's going to be there at some point but I think that, that is just a term that he uses with his comfort level and when it's a new team and it's a, a lot of new faces to him you have to have a level of comfort with all of these players and it's not hard it's hard to achieve that especially in the National Football League because you're limited on what you can do from a time standpoint and a number of practices standpoint and you have a limited amount of preseason games. You don't have a track record with all of these guys. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's all personal perspective, the way he represents it, in my opinion. He announced the quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, is the starter, finally. Uh, you know, a lot of fans, if you, you hear Shocking. some of the calls, are like, Shocking. oh, why didn't they do this two weeks ago, this and that? Well, it's done now, and there are three weeks. There, there were three weeks at that time. Until the regular season, and it's all Trevor now. I, look, I, I, I don't have any pro- – a lot of people seem to have, like, a big issue with that he waited. Right. That's strange to me. I don't understand. I mean, I, I don't understand what the big deal is. I mean, you let players compete. Uh, was he clearly going to be the starter? Maybe. But I think you also have to be able to allow the player to compete to show his teammates that he is the best option. Because – I hate to say this, but I've I've been in a locker room, okay, where you have a new quarterback that comes in, and the staff is all excited about him taking over the starting job, and the job gets given to him without any kind of competition or or a period of time to where the players that that are going to have to play with this guy 
can see it and believe it. And we were, and I, are we going to say where this is? Okay, there's only in, two I'll, options. I'll go ahead and do it because it's not a big there's deal. Only two I was options. in New York and we had we had Kenny O'Brien, who was a former first round pick, it was our starting quarterback. Okay. We draft Brownie Nagel in the second round. Okay, the first year, Brownie Nagel sits to watch. Year two, Brownie Nagel comes in. They hold Kenny out, okay, to allow Brownie Nagel to take the job. Mm -hmm. And we were all like, he's not as good as Kenny. I mean, maybe eventually he will be, but look, we got to win now. And it it didn't happen that way. And, And I think the players resented it because there never was a competition and the job was handed to Brownie Nagel. And I think it's it's not good for the player's relationship to the person that gets handed the job. But with Trevor Lawrence, wasn't handed the job. There was a period of time that to where they competed. It was very clear, I think, to everybody that watched, players, media, staff, mm-hmm. that Trevor Lawrence was the superior player. That's why he was the first overall pick in the draft. And so now by naming him, okay, now you've got three weeks to get him all the reps ready for the opener in Houston. I don't have any problem with it at all. I don't think there was anything bad about it. I mean, I've heard people say, oh, they should have been getting him all the reps anyway. Look, he still can take reps without actually participating in the play. Mm -hmm. For example, when Trevor Lawrence is taking the snaps, he's taking the reps. When Trevor Lawrence is not in the huddle and not in the center, he has the call in his ear. Correct. Okay, in practice, Daryl Bevel uses the radio communication handset, so, so the quarterbacks get used to that. He hears the call. Well, when he is sitting there watching, you can take mental reps. And sometimes mental reps are better because it gives you a little bit different perspective than actually being there, taking the snap, and then executing it with yourself. So I I don't have any issue with it whatsoever. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman. Earlier this week, Logs, you guys were uh, traveling back on Tuesday. So I jumped on Jaguars today with Mike Dempsey and – Good. You, you, you Tony Smith. Two fill hours, my shoes well. Two hours of that stuff. Good. And a lot of those two hours, some of the calls were, oh, the play calling is atrocious in the preseason on offense. Sure. And well, it, Bevel it was because it didn't work. And, <laughs> right. I mean, is it – they haven't scored points yet, and I get that. They would like to score touchdowns. Who doesn't? Uh, three points in the first half. Are you concerned with that, the play calling and all? It's too early, right? No, it's preseason not, look, week look, two. Play calling, you can't look at play calling in the preseason right. and sit there and go, what are we doing? That's no. kind of my point. It, there, there is no game planning that happens in the preseason. Now, look, you're fair to criticize once you get to the regular season. When, that when they're, exactly when they're put, my point. When, they're, when they're, playing, they're calling plays for down and distance and et cetera. In some cases in the preseason, they have a script of plays that they're going to run regardless of the down and distance. Now, did they have that? I don't know. But, I mean, there's some teams that actually do it that way. Here's what we want to work on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to call these plays because that's what we're going to do. And so I'm not a big proponent of criticizing. And and here's the other thing, JP. Yeah. Because this goes along the same lines. I I got friends that, you know, we all have a little group text, you know, and, of course, the Jaguars come up occasionally. And and, and just like many people, they watch the preseason game and they're concerned. And, and look, I'm concerned. Uh, you are, but I'm not freaking out yet. Okay? <laughs> Thank you. And the reason why is that I've been on teams and I've watched teams that have been terrible in the preseason. Some of those terrible teams in the preseason keep that status quo when they get to the regular season. They're not very good, but sometimes that's not what they look like. For example, the Baltimore Ravens have been undefeated for 19 games now in the preseason. 19 in a row. Going for 20. To yeah. break the record, the all-time record held by Vince Lombardi's Packers. Okay, have the Ravens been undefeated throughout the preseason? No, but they've been really good. They've been really good. You can go look at some other teams in the National Football League that have been perennial losers. Some of them have winning records in the preseason. Is that an indicator of the performance that's going to happen in the regular season? No, it is not. Yeah, I mean that's here. I mean we've we've had some winning preseasons and but you want to have matter. them taste success and yeah. you want to see them have a rhythm. It's not like you need to see them go out there and score twenty or okay, or twenty one points in the first quarter and go you know touchdown 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 drive. How about drive the ball and score once? Yes, and, I'm and, good with that. And it's uh, 
you want to see them get into some kind of a rhythm. One of the main things that seems to be a problem with this offense right now is that they're just not finding any rhythm in the running game. And when you have a young quarterback, you've got to be able to have a running game that's going to help you out and give you some some semblance of balance. And right now in the preseason, the running game is not working. Is it the offensive line? Is it the running backs? Uh, whatever you want to call it, it's not working right now in the preseason, but at some point you've got to have it work. They've got – they missed sixty percent of their offensive line. The starters were out: left tackle, left guard, sure. and center were all sure. out. Sure, but week. but you know to counterpoint that, okay, the Cleveland Browns came in here, you know what, week and a half ago, all back and did ups. not start yeah. an offensive line. But uh, did they come out and run the ball effectively? Not really, mm-hmm. okay, because the Jaguars' mm-hmm. defense did a good job, but they mm-hmm. were able to move the ball. They were with a second team offense against a first team defense. So. I don't know if you sit there and you go, okay, well, it's preseason. No, well, you still want to see them run the ball. I don't care if they're missing a few starters or not. I mean, you still want to see them run the ball because, you know what, at some point during the regular season, you're going to be missing starters. And those guys that step in, like Ben Barch, like Walker Little, like they did last week, they're going to have to be able to play well. Shatley, I mean, those guys, Shatley has been a starter in this league before. Sure he has, yeah. I mean, there's, there's nothing, no reason why they shouldn't have been able to run the ball better than what they've been doing so far in both games. Plenty ahead. We've got some defensive talk when we come back, Logs. That's your side of the ball. I like it. I know you do. Talked to Joe Cullen today. Did you? I did. Oh, well, maybe you'll give us a little insight. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe not. (laughs) We'll find out when we come back. Check out the Jaguars official podcast network, a free subscription on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your pods. There are a number of different places. This program archived right after the show. We've got to huddle up with Bucky Brooks, Jags Drive Time. Give us that five-star rating as always. And it's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars Happy Hour is presented in part by DreamFinders Homes, homes that fit your lifestyle. And Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. The Land Rover Defender story began with the simple thought of creating an exceptionally capable off-road vehicle, becoming the go-anywhere, do-anything, all-terrain machine. Today, there's a new Land Rover Defender, the toughest and most advanced Land Rover vehicle ever. From the beginning, Land Rover knew the new Defender was capable of great things. Motor Trend's 2021 SUV of the year is just the latest example. Test drive the new Land Rover Defender today at Land Rover Jacksonville on Atlantic Boulevard or go to LandRoverJacksonville.com. Land Rover, above and beyond. Committed to the team, committed to the mission. At Navy Mutual, we're committed to providing high quality life insurance to members of the military and their families. So our policies have no fine print and no military service restrictions. We don't work on commission, we're nonprofit. So we pass the savings along to our members because at Navy Mutual, our highest commitment is to you. Visit NavyMutual.org, Navy Mutual, ensuring those who serve. Headquartered right here in Jacksonville, CSI Companies is one of the fastest growing workforce solutions companies in the nation. As a proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars, CSI has the resources necessary to scale with any enterprise, yet they are small enough to maintain the agility, personal service, and remarkable experience they've become known for over the past three decades. This is your workforce and your business reimagined. Visit CSICompanies.com to learn more. At most sandwich places, asking for more of something is just part of the drill. But what if you never had to ask for more? What if more was just a given? At Daly's, more is what our sandwiches are built on. More meat. More cheese. More veggies. More quality. More taste. All for a price that's anything but more. Sandwiches from Dash, made fresh, dailies. Hi folks, Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern pit barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, 
Bonas has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bonos locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. Bonos is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bonos today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. Mike Dempsey and Fat Tony, Jaguars today. All Jaguars, all NFL, all the time. 10 to noon weekdays on 1010XL. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on a Thursday afternoon. J.P. Shadrick with Jeff Lagerman on 1010XL and 92.5 FM and Jaguars social media channels. Glad you're along with us. Preseason week three, the Jags and the Dallas Cowboys, 1 o'clock Sunday at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Looking forward to that. Final full camp practice today officially, and they're back to a what would be a regular season media schedule at least to go watch for about 20 minutes then stretch that's going to be about it moving right. ahead that's all right i mean look the the practice today was uppers which uh you know after and i'm interested because i don't know the exact rules how they work in the next two weeks you know you have rules that guide you mm-hmm. once you get to the regular season as far as the number of padded practices that you're allowed to have what is it for this because it's this is new. This is kind of, is this the in between window? What are the rules? Yeah, how many have, times can you practice? Yeah, you have you know? two weeks. Yeah. You know how many days off do the players have to have? Mm-hmm. It's it's kind of new ground for the NFL here. But uh, but I like the idea of having a two week window from the last preseason game to the first opening weekend. I guess you could say because in reality it's not two weeks away because a Thursday night game starts. There's yeah, that's right. Well before, which I think is uh Tampa Dallas. Is in and that the Thursday night game, which is like the opening night Thursday night football. Yeah. Dallas and Tampa Bay at yeah. uh, Raymond James. Yep. Thursday, yep. September ninth, the the uh, first big Sunday is the twelfth. Yeah, right. so uh, in reality it's uh it's less than or exact exactly two weeks away from tonight. And that, that'll be a good football game. Uh, watching the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Cowboys, it uh, ought, ought to be good. Let's go to defense logs. You know, last week the starters gave up a pair of Jameis Winston touchdown passes. Two nice throws by Jameis. Give him credit. Uh, decent coverage about, down the field. How about the catches? The catches were incredible. I mean, uh, I mean, we're talking catches that were made that were – yeah, yeah. Interference flags being thrown <laughs> and these catches were being made with defenders draped on guys and it was by – Who's that guy? Marquez Callaway, man. He <laughs> apparently had a good camp in New Orleans, and and, and he was going against Shaq Griffin. I yeah. think. I mean, look. I mean, that's that's a heck of a day for a young wide receiver that was undrafted, and, and I'm sure people in New Orleans are going, oh, "Who's that? Michael Thomas? Who?" <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they're saying that, but uh, but certainly been impressed with this young man because that one right there where he was interfered with. From a uh, young Tyson Campbell, yep. which uh, you'd like to see a, a heck of a lot better play than that that he had, uh, but but I mean credit credit him uh, the wide receiver from the Saints he did a really good job. Is there uh, you know take us through those two touchdown plays though Logs you know it was pretty tight coverage on that obviously the interference play they got the flag he still caught the ball and then the one front left corner it was Shaq Griffin. Uh, and still, uh, as Urban Meyer said in the post game to us, we just got to finish the play. Well, Shaq was involved with both of them. Okay, mm-hmm. on one of them, it was him alone. He's he's on an island. He's got to be able to cover it, and he's got to be a little bit more over the top. A couple ways to accomplish that: get a better jam at the line of scrimmage to interrupt the route and the timing, or to just be able to run faster. The other one where Tyson Campbell was a corner on the opposite side of the field because the safety had to what we call cut on an out route on the other side underneath of Griffin. Now Campbell has to replace the safety and run deep. And Campbell's there. Yeah, they did a good job with that. Plenty of time. Sure. But once again, when I talked to you about Tyson Campbell in the offseason and gave you the scouting report on him, I said, this guy is the shadow. And he is. That's he, your that's your nickname. You've claimed it already. You you've cleared it through the the Marvel people right? or Marvel as you call them people. Yeah, <laughs> but no, he's 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 amazing as far as he can stick with anybody. But when the ball is in the air, that's when you need. That's where the money starts to flow. That's where you need to make the play, and that's what Tyson Campbell had some struggles with at college, 
and that's where he needs to show improvement here in the pros. If he can show improvement once the ball is almost there, this guy is is another worldly player now. I mean, I'm serious now. Otherworldly. He can be um, – if he can finish – the, if he had Cisco, mm-hmm. okay, the draft pick yeah, from Syracuse, he can safety, finish plays. If he had his ball skills and finishing ability, this might be one of the best corners in the league. Period. But that's something that he doesn't have that he needs to get better at. Pass rush. No Josh Allen last week. Uh, what do you what do you make of that? I, I think that this is going to be. A, a team effort all year. And when I say that, they don't have a dominant inside pass rusher. JP, who tell me who the three-technique dominant pass rusher cool. is with his defense. Yeah, it's tough right now. I mean, the, Roy Robertson-Harris, maybe. Okay, he's not a not pass that. rusher. That's not, not him. A pass he's rusher. an How many guy. sacks did he have last year? Yeah, not many. Zero. Yeah. So, yeah, and he's an outside kind of set-the-edge type. So he's a he's a three four defensive end that you hope yeah. that he can find more of a seal or a little higher ceiling. But I mean that's Urban's term. You know we want to find his ceiling, but the reality is he wasn't a big sack guy to pass. Now, Jihad Ward, who we're looking at right here, yeah, is I think is the best inside pass rusher they got, that's and right. he's a two hundred ninety pound kind of journeyman, and I like him though. But I mean he plays hard. He's got a little slipperiness to him. He's big. He's you know even though he's a linebacker and he wears a fifties number, he weighs about two hundred ninety pounds, maybe mid two eighties. And uh, but besides that, could you get Devon Hamilton to push the pocket a little bit? Yes. But I'm talking about a dominant inside pass rusher or a really good inside pass rusher. You don't have one. So somehow or another, they're going to have to scheme a little bit, and then hope that the edge players and Caleb on Chazon and Josh Allen can find a way to pressure. And then when I, I would also put Smoot in that category, and Smoot can kick down and play mm-hmm. a little three technique. Sure. And Smoot gives you great effort, and he gives you good solid play, but he's not a dominant pass rusher. So I think that's going to be something that, you know, we talked about it in the preseason games of our broadcast, and that the defense has to find a way to make impact plays. Well, impact plays come from two areas, taking the ball away, interceptions, and then also pressuring the quarterback, which causes a lot of those interceptions. So can you find that? I think that that's going to be kind of a work in progress all year long, but I really believe this defense can be really strong against the run when you're good and strong against the run. you got a chance to be better against the pass. You know, that was another topic that came up on Tuesday on, on Jaguars Today was the run defense. And, yes, the statistics in the preseason have been very good, right? They, they have stopped the run whenever it has been run at them. But consider this. Best run defense in the National Football League through two preseason games. Consider but it's this. preseason stats No, well, again. consider this. Like, the Browns didn't play any of their starters, right? It was second team. Uh, the Saints didn't have Kamara back there running mm-hmm. around. That's correct. Um, so how real is it? I'm not going to – I think it's a little early to say, hey, Eureka, it's fixed, the run defense. Let's see it in real it, action. It, it goes along the same lines of people saying that this offense is terrible. I mean, it's look, it's preseason, okay? Yeah. You, you don't overreact to the offense looking rough, and then you don't overreact to the Jaguars' defense being the number one ranked – team in the league against the run in the preseason. Well, people do, but they shouldn't. Yes. That's how it works. So. You, you, you take everything. There was, a, there was a term that was used by a former general manager here, and his name was Shaq Harris. Okay. And he always said, he said, you know, the one thing you got to do sometimes is slow down. He said, and, and then sometimes you need to give yourself a speeding ticket to slow down. He said, because that, in other words, you don't overreact. You know, take everything with kind of a little grain of salt and then kind of see if it repeats itself. And then you can say, okay, well, now we need to react because there's a pattern here. And right now, there are no patterns in the preseason that typically can translate and roll right over into the regular season. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. We touched on some of the pass rush and the, and the inside guys. Um, Chase, and we were talking on the practice field today, and I brought up Caleb on Chase on. On the Jihad Ward sack, it looked like he beat the left tackle and pushed the quarterback up in the pocket, and Ward was there to make the sack. What kind of play did you see out of Chase on overall on Monday? Not as good as he had against the Browns. I mean, he made that one play that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, overall, I just thought it was just kind of okay. And here's probably one of the reasons why. This is why you kind of grade things on a scale in the preseason. Who did he face in the Cleveland game? Backup. Two backup tackles. Yeah. Who did he face against the Saints? Teron Armstead and Ramchek. Yeah. I mean, these are two upper are guys. echelon tackles in the National Football sure. League. 
and they did a great job. So uh, it is what it is. And then here's the thing. The sack that Jawan got, or uh, Jihad Jihad Ward Ward got, Mm -hmm. what what offensive line was in at that point? Backups. Yeah, that's true. Backups, okay? So that's why I'm saying you you, kind of – Kind of just take everything with a little bit of a grain of salt, and and uh, and you look at the individual play, and that's why I think a lot of times when you when you watch preseason game, I don't watch the scoreboard so much. For me, I'm watching the play. I'm watching individuals play because there's not a scheme so much involved. There's not game planning so much involved. And sometimes, for example, C.J. Beathard looked amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. He did. Look, here's the thing I will, the I will, I will say. First of all, C.J. Beathard has warranted the opportunity to compete for There's the backup no job. No doubt. And okay. he's, you argue he's leading it by a good bit. And, there, and absolutely. Okay, but that's part of what you look at in the evaluation process. You also have to evaluate the day in and day out stuff and practice, et cetera. But if you have a quarterback that goes in at that stage of the game, and C.J. is in what year now, J.P.? Do you remember what year Fourth, I believe. Okay, how about five? Fifth year. Okay, when you have a quarterback who's got some years under his belt in the National Football League, if he's playing in the fourth quarter of a preseason game and he doesn't look good, that ain't good. <laughs> true. That's true. And, and that's the one thing that you will, you will find that's consistent. If you're, if you're ever thinking about gambling in the preseason, do they even take gambling bets in the preseason? Oh, they do, yes. If, if, you're, if you're a gambling person, uh, look at the quarterback depth chart and the teams that have the more veteran talent, the backup quarterback positions, take them. Take them. I mean, I mean for they, entertainment purposes only, okay, folks? Well, I'm just of saying course. is that they, t- they should have success and they typically do have success because they're playing against some t- guys that – may or may not be in the National Football League in two weeks. That's the way it is. Just saying. Speaking of, we'll come back and uh, discuss some of the cuts earlier this week. And uh, it is a big week for those guys on the bubble. And the injury. Ooh. Yeah, all the injury. We'll have the uh, Baptist Health Injury Report when we come back as well. Jaguars Game Day broadcasts are presented by Star Credit Union. And if you're looking for the MVP of the truck game, then look no further than Ford F-150. Loaded with impressive capability and designed to dominate work, play, and everything in between, this truck makes tough look easy. No wonder it's the official truck of the NFL and proud partner of your Jacksonville Jaguars. This is Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Digital Network. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer. All named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. Because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford SUVs. Drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 520. So, it's happy hour. Let's talk whiskey options. Have you tried Citrus Distillers? Have you tried Citrus Distillers Limited Edition 2021 Barrel Aged Jaguar Whiskey? Did you know it's only available for a limited time and manufactured in Jacksonville? Yes, Jacksonville. I said local whiskey. Try it on the rocks or in a Jack's Whiskey Sour. Citrus Distillers Jaguars Whiskey is available at local liquor stores, restaurants, and the Jaguar Stadium. Drink local, Jacksonville. Find recipes and events at jaguarswhiskey.com. 
Your family isn't like anyone else's. Your home shouldn't be either. At DreamFinders Homes, you can build the home of your dreams in one of their 30-plus communities in Northeast Florida. Choose from luxury single-family homes or maintenance-free townhomes from the 200s. DreamFinders specializes in homes built to fit your lifestyle. To find out more, call 904-738-0165 or visit DreamFindersHomes.com. If something's been hurting, aching, or bothering you, don't ignore it any longer. It's time to take care of your health again. It's time to make an appointment with a Baptist Health primary care doctor or specialist. Call 904-202-4U to schedule a virtual visit or see a doctor in person at a Baptist Health location. The time for better health is here. Call 904-202-4YOU or visit GetBetterJacks.com. When Jaguars news breaks, you'll hear about it first on 1010XL, home of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It is a stressful time. I mean, um, a lot of guys, you know, futures, careers are at stake. Um, But at the end of the day, I mean, we've been playing this game for a long time. So I just remind guys just to have fun. You know what I'm saying? You, You play your best when you play free. Um, you make the most plays and you're having fun. So I think um, that's usually the message that I give guys, especially going into the last preseason game, just because um, it's easy for your mind to just wander into some, some negative places. But at the end of the day, it's football, bro. We all trying to just make plays and have fun the same way we were when we were younger playing football. So that's one thing I like to remind a lot of guys. Dario Gunbowale, the Jaguars running back, and welcome back. It's Jaguars happy hour. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Logman, busy schedule at Daly's Place coming up. Chris Tomlin, Kerry Joe Bethel Music Tour, September 3rd. Rod Wave, September 9th. Sam Hunt, September 10th. Trippy Red, September 18th. A bunch of shows coming up late September and into October, including Carlos Santana. Zach Brown Band coming. All right. Got a lot. Now you're talking. Tickets at dailiesplace.com. That'll be a good one. Uh, time for the injury report presented by Baptist Health, changing health care for good. Not good news this week. Dylan Moses still on the active non-football injury list. As we say, uh, always, that feels like a long-term solution. Injured reserve now, Travis Etienne Jr. with a foot to injury. Reported to be Liz Frank. And three wide receivers, uninjured reserve, Terry Godwin, Josh Amatabebe, and Tim Jones. And on the reserve COVID-19 list currently, Josh Allen. And I believe he has to have two negative tests. To uh, be able to get back after 10 days. That's correct. So that's going to be a little bit. He won't be available most likely this week. Well, a couple things on that list. I mean, first of all, Josh Allen, I I hope that at some point he gets vaccinated. I mean, that's the one thing that's concerning about the players that are not vaccinated. There's a higher risk of them not being available on game days. And it's apparent, I guess, that, you know, that I don't know if he's unvaccinated or vaccinated, but if he's unvaccinated, I hope he gets it. The. Travis Etienne thing, yeah, gotten a question a lot, obviously since yesterday about what exactly can the Jaguars to you know can they do to replace who's going to replace Travis Etienne? Oof. The answer is nobody. No, you can't replace a guy that has game breaking speed, that has big playability, that catches the ball, and. It just doesn't happen. I mean, that's why he was a first-round pick, because he's a rare talent. And it's a shame. I feel for him. The Liz Frank injury is something that I had in 1995. And it's one of the most painful things I've ever felt injury-wise that I had in my career. And now, uh, to explain it, I, I don't want you to put your foot on the desk and show me. I, you know, I don't need that. But why basically, it, it's between the, the big toe and the second toe, well, kind of midfoot, okay, right? Got, it's about right. I got shorts right. on here, so it's not okay. that big of a deal. <laughs> if, you were, if you were to touch the top of your arch, and I have fairly high arches, okay, okay but if you were to touch the top of the arch, right there in that area lies mm-hmm. the Liz Frank area. Got it. And my injury happened <clears throat> when uh, one of our one of my fellow defensive linemen got thrown to the ground, and he landed, and my foot, the toe was down in the ground, and then the heel was up, and he landed on the top of my 
my heel yeah. and it essentially compressed my foot. Yeah. It tried to smash my foot. So Ooh. toes were up and it didn't hurt my toes like getting turf toe or anything, but it all the stress went to the middle of the foot to that There's a joint there. Yeah. Liz Frank joint. Yeah. The Liz Frank, I th- if I if you Google this, you'll I think find that a Liz Frank was named after some guy who falls out of a. Uh, uh, they found this injury common with people that fell out of their horse saddles because it strained or sprained the middle of the foot. And Liz Frank, I guess, was some guy that used to ride horses or something of that nature. But anyway, I will tell you that I missed the last four games of the season in '95, the inaugural season here in Jacksonville. And then when I they they didn't deem that surgery was necessary for mine. They wanted to rest it to see if that would cure it. So then I started. I actually did like nothing, no training, no running or anything, till um, uh, through January, February, then March, and then and at some point in March started to come back and running. And literally, JP, it still hurt so bad. It took literally like four and a half, five months mm. for my foot to heal, mm. and so. Now, we're talking about an elite running back that has elite speed. That's the one thing about Foots, and I guess he's going to have surgery, it was reported. Yeah, that's right. So could he heal faster than that with surgery? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not a doctor. I just play one on TV. Yeah, uh, on IR uh, before the season, so he's done for the year. But that's a pain. Yeah. That's a painful, painful injury, and – and I think he got kind of landed on in a pile, so, so I don't know if that's exactly like what happened. We were looking at this today because he had that the pass out in the flat where he kind of slipped down awkwardly, and then he kind of looked as he got up. It was an awkward yeah, kind of step, and then he stayed in the game. Yeah, but he stayed in and didn't seem to be limping or anything. That's right. Two plays later, and the next play he's kind of running down the field. The play after that was a one-yard run up the middle, and he that's, came out of that. That's where I'm wondering, did somebody land on him in that? And it felt like you know that was the play also that Marvin Jones went off to the sideline and had his shoulder looked at, which was an AC sprain, Correct. we found out later. So they didn't show ETN limping off on television right? because they were showing Marvin Jones at the time. Right. So we didn't get to see exactly so I, I see what happened. My, my thought is, and I don't know this for a fact, that when he went into that pile, somebody landed yeah. on his foot, and then that's what compressed it or – uh, impacted his foot, but yeah, that's uh, it's unfortunate because you know, look, I mean, this we talked about this after the draft, and that you know, you you want to have two positions for a young quarterback that are very capable, and those two positions are first of all, besides the strong running game, I'm talking about in the passing game. Yeah, sure. The security blanket of a quarterback, tight end, mm-hmm. which the tight end people always refer to the tight end as kind of a security blanket because that's easy completions quarterback can take it and throw it to the tight end five yards boom five yards or 10 yards down the field Mm -hmm. big target okay tony gonzalez right i mean caught a million of those little little what we call choice routes or little stick routes whatever you want to call them well if the tight end is not supplying those easy completions what's what's the next best position the running running back running back back. the flat swing pass but the unique thing with etn is that this is legitimate world-class speed on a football field that has great open field elusiveness that would have given this team a a hold-your-breath factor when he catches the ball in space. And I, at this point, you're not going to be able to find that because that no. is already signed elsewhere, and they don't let go of that. No, and, and, and some people said, well, what about Jamal Agnew? Can he do that? Can Tavon Austin do that? Look, can – Philip Dorsett provides some of that as a wide receiver. Look, the the reality is is that some of these guys have been around and bounced around with different teams for a reason. Yeah, that's right. And I'm not trying to criticize the players because some players will bounce around the league and have different teams under their resume and still be really good players. Not not great players, but good players. What you were looking for with ETN was greatness. When you draft somebody in the first round, you're looking for greatness. And it's a shame that they lost him for the season. I hope he comes back strong, and I know he'll work hard to do that. Some cuts earlier this week. The Jags had to be from 85 to 80 on Tuesday. Derwin Gray, an offensive lineman, was cut. Jameson Houston, cornerback and defensive tackle Kenny Randall, all gone. The Jags later in the week claimed offensive lineman Badara Treor from the Bears. And waved Garrett McGinn, the offensive lineman. Treyor is uh, I saw him out there today. Lawrence. Big man, six seven three twenty is what he's listed. Yeah, and McG- he's about all of it. Well, who he re- he replaced McGinn, who McGinn had a really rough game. Okay, 
I mean, okay. a rough game against the Saints. They, you know, for almost all of training camp, again, had been at right tackle. And then because all of a sudden Cam Robinson can't play, Walker Little starts at left tackle. Now they need a backup to play left tackle. They move him again over, and it just – he was outmatched. And so, uh, you know, he, he would be really good at, seriously. Who? Wrestling. Who, McGinn? McGinn. Have you seen the guy? <laughs> Big long hair guy, right? He looks yeah. like the Undertaker. <laughs> I'm serious. This guy needs – he needs uh, – you know, football doesn't work out. Remember Austin Pastor that used to play here? Pastor. He, yeah, he, he looked like one to me, too. He did. Big, nasty-looking yeah, yeah, yeah. dude with long hair. I'm just, JP, I'm just telling you, Garrett McGinn, he, he might have a future in wrestling. If, he, if football doesn't work out, they somebody from AEW needs to call him. I up think they have his he contact totally, info. He totally has that that Undertaker look to him. Wow. Yeah, and he's a big guy. I mean, obviously he's All an offensive that. lineman. Yeah, he's an, you know an athlete. Yeah, they are uh, battling for roster spots. This is the final chance for a lot of guys to get some things on tape. Obviously, the old cliche: there are thirty-one other NFL teams. If it doesn't work out here, you might. Uh, find somewhere else to be. So uh, that's a big cut from 80 down to 53 next Tuesday, and I'm sure there are a lot of guys that are anxious about their opportunity this Sunday. Well, and they should be. And what what you bring up, you bring up the word opportunity. This is the last opportunity for a, a couple different things. It's it's the last opportunity for this team to have a game type situation to get ready for the regular season. It's also the last opportunity for some of these guys to get a look, to show the coaches what they have. It's also a last opportunity for the coaches to see it because this is the last impression that will be on their, imprinted on their minds as they're making the decisions over the weekend. So it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting cut. I think there are going to be some very difficult decisions I think at the safety spot, there's going to be a couple of players that are going to get let go that are going to be really good players that other teams, if I'm watching, if I need a safety, well, maybe like the Dallas Cowboys that have some issues with COVID and everything, if I need a safety, I'm looking right here in Jacksonville. And I'm, a, I'm going to find a guy that they cut that can come in and start for me somewhere. So, and that's, I think, also brings up – that will teams watch the Jaguars? Maybe at certain positions, but this team will be watching other teams' waiver wire. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They and, will be absolutely yeah. looking to improve position groups through other teams' cuts. And they get the first three weeks of the regular season to take advantage of the first choice. That is correct, so, because they were the worst team in the league last year. Better take advantage while you have it, if there are opportunities to use it. You know, it's not like you're going to – all of a sudden, you're going to bring, make the talent. Let's say you had a, a number rating system for talent, and let's say you know, let's say you're at a 65. Right. You're not going to take your overall team level talent to like an 80. Yeah, we're not we're not playing Madden here. No, you know, right. Because the guys that are getting cut for the most part are getting cut for reasons. But there are teams like the Jaguars that have mm-hmm. at that safety a surplus, position, if you will, of that, safety. It might have a little surplus, and I think the teams that are smart. Find a way to manage the rosters to keep that talent together and then to find ways to utilize those players or to gain value from them just besides cutting them. Hmm. You know, can you trade them to maybe acquire a player at another position that you're delinquent at? Can you trade them to acquire a draft pick in the future? I mean, those are all things that are, are going to be considered. But make no mistake about it. Even though you think, or okay, this player – they make cuts, okay, they get down to 53, and the players that are on that 53 are going, yeah, 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 I made it. Ooh, you <laughs> might want to just hang on for a minute. Yeah. Because there will be more transactions that ensue. Because remember, there's a lot of time between this weekend and opening weekend. Yes, there is. Two weeks, in fact. Uh, that'll do it for our first hour of Jaguars Happy Hour. Network coverage begins. More of Logs and, and me coming up. Can't get enough of it today. We've got a lot going on in the second hour coming up. We'll hear from Jeff Darlington of ESPN. He said, I'm with Trevor Lawrence before Monday Night Football. Bucky Brooks has his take on the Travis Etienne situation, how they replace it. 
Second hour of Jaguars Happy Hour coming up next on the Jaguars Digital Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go, exclusively. This is Jaguars Happy Happy Hour. Former Jaguar Jeff Lagerman and J.P. Shadrick provide the latest Jaguars news and what's happening around the NFL. Jaguars Happy Hour begins right now. Welcome in this Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Radio Network. Preseason Week 3, the Jaguars and the Dallas Cowboys coming up Sunday at AT AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. And training camp winding down this week. J.P. Shadrick with you. Jeff Lagerman alongside Jaguars analyst, former first-round pick of the New York Jets, and a free agent signing with the Jaguars in 1995. Mm Mm-hmm. For all those new to our network, and there are many of those this year, thank you for joining us on the network this season. So, um, hey, they've named a quarterback, Logs. Surprise, surprise, it's Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, and it was just a matter of time before they made the announcement. And totally get what Urban Meyer was thinking there. you got to have a player prove it. it. It does good things for the locker room when players, quote-unquote, earn a job. And, uh, and it was the obvious choice. When you watched – the body of work from practice to the preseason games, it was very clear, it wasn't close, that Trevor had all the elements. The only thing he's missing is inexperience, and it's going to take some time, but there's make no mistake about it. The way he throws the football, the composure that he has in the pocket, the abilities that he has to raise the abilities of others to execute the offense – these are all in favor of Trevor Lawrence. Let's hear from Urban Meyer after he settled the quarterback position earlier this week, explaining the timing of the decision. I did, but uh, you know it is, uh, it's a three-week preseason as opposed to a four. We do have the bye week afterwards, but I think uh, as we continue, it's a uh, uh, matter of a little bit of repetition now. So we wanted him to earn it, as we do with every position. We felt he has after the last uh, nice performance was uh, it was good. Obviously not great, but we you know didn't run the ball very well. But uh, but I kind of in my mind had that as a, after the second preseason that we kind of have to to get someone ready to play in three weeks. Yeah, three weeks away from uh, kickoff weekend, the Jaguars and the Houston Texans in Week One. Trevor Lawrence reacting to the news this week favorably as expected. Yeah, it was good, man. We we talked about our QB room, and um, man, we just have a, we have a great group. So I'm I'm really excited for the opportunity. Uh, it doesn't really change anything though. Still got the same task in front of us. Got to get a lot better um, individually as a team, as an offense. So just looking forward to going to work this week. You know, it brings some clarity, which is nice going forward. But it really doesn't change much. But yeah, I'm really excited for the opportunity. Grateful for it. So Trevor's the starting quarterback for the Jaguars, Logs. So that means there's now a battle for the backup spot. Mm-hmm. C.J. Beathard, Gardner Minshew going at it. Well, feels like. You know, I, I, I think the big question is, is how do you, how do you grade them? You know, how does the evaluation in the coach's eyes and uh, the personnel guy's eyes, how do they do it? Because if you're grading on a different scale, for example, Let's say you put more emphasis on practice or equal emphasis on practice as you do games. Then you might say it's, it's maybe a little advantage Gardner Minshew because he's been pretty good in practice. Mm-hmm. But if you're pushing more of that weighted grade to the performance in the games, which ultimately that's what it's about is game day performance, then C.J. Beathard would have a higher grade right now because of the performance in the games, but then you also have to grade that to scale because CJ's played later in the preseason games. Gardner Minshew's played a little bit earlier against what you would assume would be a little bit higher level of competition. So it's going to be interesting, but I think the play of CJ Beathard in the last two preseason games has warranted him to have an opportunity to compete and we'll see how that plays out. I, I don't know if, if it's going to play out or if that is truly in fact, something that is open, uh, but 
It should be. I mean, competition's not over until it's over. But the most important thing, I read a quote from Tom Moore. And, uh, Tom, Tom, like Indianapolis Colts, Tom Moore? Tom Moore, who was a longtime offensive coach yeah. for the Indianapolis Colts mm-hmm. under Peyton Manning. And he was asked one time, and Ron Jaworski put this in his book. He, Ron Jaworski was, you know, he's an NFL analyst, yes. former quarterback, the Philadelphia Eagles, for those maybe that don't know. Jaws, yes. Okay, Jaws. He was asked about, do you practice, you know, practice not having Peyton Manning? So do you put the backup in because they weren't repping the backup quarterback at that mm-hmm. time? Mm-hmm. And Tom Moore was like, look, we're not going to practice messed up. Okay? He goes, because if we don't have 18, we're messed up anyway. That's <laughs> a good point. It's a really good point. Okay. Absolutely. So, with Trevor Lawrence, he gives you your best chance. And he is a future, without a doubt, franchise quarterback. Get him the reps. He's going to make those around him better. There are going to be bumps in the roads. Make no mistake mm-hmm. about it. But get him the reps. Get him ready. Because it's going to get faster and it's going to get a heck of a lot more involved for the quarterback position once you get in the regular season. He's one weapon short now on offense than he was last week. Travis Etienne Jr. is out for the year. Liz Frank injury in his left foot, surgery, and he's on injured reserve. So it's a big blow for this Jaguars offense. A, a, what, what did Urban Meyer say? A punch to the jaw. And yeah, Urban Meyer this week was uh, explaining the situation with ETN and maybe what to do next. Yeah, that was a shot in the jaw, that one. Um, it was really coming on in practice and we're, you know, uh, you saw his big playability in practice, not in the game yet. Um, tough injury. Uh, how do we fill that? You know, well, it's, we're still in that conversation right now. That was earlier this week. That was actually on Wednesday. Yeah, and that conversation could last for a long, long time. Well, you can talk about it all you want, but yeah. it, it's not going to change the fact that you lost a weapon. You know, and, and, and here's the difference for Urban Meyer. At Florida or at Ohio State, you lose Carlos Hyde, Ezekiel Elliott is your next guy. That's right. Okay? Yes. That's what he had Yes. at Ohio State. That's a great point. In the National Football League, that doesn't happen. Okay, there's no Ezekiel Elliott who is a freshman that you were just going to kind of keep on the shelf until Carlos Hyde graduates and moves on to the pros. It's different. And that's the hardest thing, and that's why you've seen kind of this evolution of the preseason uh, in the National Football League over the last number of years and why coaches have become hesitant to play some guys in the preseason because they know if you lose a guy, you lose a guy. And it's not like you can just say, hey, we got this freshman and we're going to just put him right in and we'll be okay. It doesn't work that way. So uh, it's a shame. It's a, it's a tough injury. Any kind of a foot injury for an athlete is always concerning because that's the one area you can't protect. You know, like if you – if you hurt a hand, okay, you, for example, DJ Chark, you know. Yeah. Right? Had surgery or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Middle finger, uh, Had it hairline, fixed up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was he doing today? He's running out. Running around. Yeah. Okay, he's not catching any balls mm-hmm. or anything like that, but he's running around. He's doing things while. Staying in shape. This right. is healing. Yeah. Okay. When you have a foot, that's not what it's about. I mean, you can't go and, and practice Anything football, because pretty much everything football is involving your foot. So that's a shame. I understand he's going to have surgery, or the reports are that he's going to have surgery. Hopefully that will ensure the healing process. When I say ensure, make it completely healed and speed up that timetable a little bit. And obviously there's plenty of time for him to now heal, and there's no reason to push it. But you hope that that makes it 100% recovery percentage-wise, because this was going to be an absolute dynamic threat for this football team, a player that you would hold your breath on every time he touched the ball in space. In fact, when I was talking to Urban Meyer for the pregame interview last week, that's one of the things I brought up. I said, are you excited to see Travis Etienne finally get the ball in space? And when I asked him the original question, he was like, you know, I was like, a, like yes, you know, we had, we had that one in the first preseason game against Cleveland that sailed over his head and, and, it, and we didn't have it happen. But it, you could tell that he wanted to see that. 
Plenty more on this coming up and maybe some options for the Jaguars to not fill the role. That's nearly impossible, but uh, some things they could do otherwise a little bit later from Bucky Brooks a little later. Also, Jeff Darlington of ESPN on Trevor Lawrence's interview before the Monday Night Football game. Check out the official Jaguars Podcast Network, a free subscription on Apple iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a comment and a five-star rating. And it's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hi, I'm Tito Beveridge, founder and master distiller at Tito's Handmade Vodka. In 1997, we became the first micro distillery in the state of Texas, and we're still making the same smooth stuff after all these years. We're still cooking in a pot still, working with our dogs by our sides, having fun and tasting batches, and I'm still wearing the same hat even after all these years. Head over to titosvodka.com to learn more about what else we're doing the same. Cheers. 80 proof Tito's Handmade Vodka, distilled and bottled in Austin, Texas. titosvodka.com Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk, checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk, checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. My, my thing is, in the preseason, I'm looking uh, more for, um, you know, like warriors or, or, or you know, those dogs that I need to really just um, um, uh, have on my team. In the preseason, you know, there's not a lot of plays being called. Um, you got so many guys in, so you just never, you don't know who's here or who's not, you know. So it's just a filling out process right now. Um, I mean, it's a huge difference from now to the regular season. I mean, it, it, it's way huge difference you know so I mean uh, we still got some work to do but at the end of the day you know uh, we, we still trying to just fit in those missing pieces right now and um, you know preseason is a perfect time to do that. Rayshon Jenkins Jaguar safety earlier this week actually after the game on Monday Night Football and welcome back it's Jaguars happy hour on the Jaguars radio network JP Shadrick Jeff Lagerman glad you're along with us as the Jaguars prepare for preseason week three, the Dallas Cowboys await Sunday at AT&T Stadium in Dallas, Texas. Uh, one more offensive note before we dig into the defense mm-hmm. here, Logs. That, uh, we didn't really get to today yet. Tavon Austin went down today. There's no official word from the Jaguars yet on that one, but I uh, made a, a catch on the field today. It was an open practice to the media. And then was off on the side on another field. The athletic training staff came over. They were working on his leg. And then uh, Urban Meyer came over, gave him a big hug, patted him on the head. They had a conversation. Uh, no word yet on Tavon Austin. That was one of the names that had kind of popped up after Travis Etienne. Hey, maybe Tavon can do some of this stuff. He won't do all of the stuff. But, you know, uh, now we'll see. We're waiting to see what happens with Austin here. Well, it doesn't help if you work, you know, as a team, if you were considering using a Tavon Austin to replace some of the role that Travis Etienne was going to fulfill. But I, I don't see that happening because Etienne is a talent that you were thinking it could be a game breaker type of, of player. Yeah. Is Tavon Austin that? I mean, he's bounced around, mm-hmm. what, like four teams, five mm-hmm. teams recently? He's in eighth year. He's was been with around. the Cowboys for a bit. That's right. Uh, with Green Bay Packers mm-hmm. a little bit last mm-hmm. year, and you wouldn't even have known that because he didn't play. 
And that was a team that went pretty far into the playoffs. He ended up, I think, on injury reserve with them. So uh, that's the hard part of injuries. If, if uh, Sometimes you have players that rise up that you know you just didn't know about, but then all of a sudden then when they get the opportunity, you're excited about it. But that's, that's not – I mean, do you look at your running back room? There's nobody in the running back room that can do that. <laughs> nobody. Nope. It's nope. Just, just the way it is. That's right. Can somebody at the wide receiver position do that? I mean, you got a guy. You got a you got, you got three, four. Of them are for, but Chenault's not a burner, right? Chenault is never when he gets the hands on his ball. He's physical. He's not going to run away from people and be a home run. That's just not his style of play. He's a bruiser. He's a big, bumping bruiser that can overpower guys, but he can't run away from people. That's not what he does. Everybody's got a niche. That's not his niche. Does. Can a Philip Dorsett? I mean, remember going all the way back sure, when they signed yeah. him. They talked about how speed. fast and how how much speed he has. Treadwell, another former first round pick, like Tavon Austin. I mean, all these guys had had first round picked grades on them, and they were selected in the first round. But they've bounced around. They've bounced around for a reason. When Treadwell first started camp, right, pretty good, right? Yeah, he's been okay on the practice field. Looked pretty good, making some catches, okay. doing in things. In the last yeah. week and a half, what are you seeing? I haven't seen that. See, I'll say that. It's my thing. I yeah, mean, that, you know, right. there's a consistency and a level that you have to reach to be one of those players that you just go, yeah, this is going to be a guy that makes a difference. Can LaVisca make a difference? Yes. Can 17 make a difference? DJ Chark? Absolutely. Sure. Can 30 make a difference? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But none of those guys – have the elite speed where they get in space, they can go. I mean, how many touchdowns did DETN score at Clemson? Uh, the, the most ever in the ACC, right. It was like, yeah. oh, I mean, I don't know what the exact number yeah. is, but it's the ridiculous. 60s, yeah. yeah, A ridiculous that's amount. Right. So that's a tough loss. Let's go to defense now. And, you know, what is your comfort level with what you've seen so far on the defensive side of the ball? The starters are out there a little longer last week. Josh Allen's not available. He's on the reserve COVID-19 list. Other than that, uh, pretty much everybody's out there and, and contributing in the preseason. Where are you on the defense logs? First of all, I, I like it because I think they're going to be really good at the fundamentals of stopping the run, which you gotta, you got to start with that. If, you, if you're not doing that, you don't have a chance. Last year, the defense couldn't do that. And it was one of the reasons why they were one of the worst defenses in the league. Now with the front three guys of Roy Robertson Harris, Devon Hamilton, and Malcolm Brown, those three guys are stout. And they can they can push offensive lines back. Miles Jack and Damian Wilson are going to be two physical linebackers. Hope they stay healthy because mm-hmm. you don't have a whole lot of depth behind them. Like the way they're playing. Your outside positions, outside backer position, you're going to have a multitude of guys that are going to be playing in there. You hope that Josh Allen can raise his level of play up in this 3-4 defense and find a level of performance that he hasn't even seen yet. Can he be a double-digit sack guy? I don't know. No, he was a couple years ago, but you know what, JP? There was a lot of guys around him that helped him get to sure 10. Sure there were. Yeah. A lot of guys. That's right. So can Caleb on Chazon get better? I think those are all things that are left unanswered. Can Smoot help him? I think Smoot's a, a good football player, plays hard, can give him a lot of different reps at a lot of different places. He can play outside back or defensive end. He can rush from three technique. Is that where he's going to make hay all the time? Probably not, but he can do it. So, And that's the nice thing about this defense. You have a lot of guys that can fill a lot of different roles. So when this team lines up, I think there will be a little bit of an element of confusion. Okay. Okay, what are they going to run? Well, they Why got, is this guy lined up here? They got him here. and him and him, yeah. but wait a minute. They lined up in a 4-3, wait a minute, 3-4? What is this? You know, so that's kind of what they're going to be able to do because Smoot can play multiple positions. Devon Hamilton can play nose. He can play defensive end. He can play defensive tackle. I mean, there's guys that can do different things. Jihad Ward, a guy that can play three technique, defensive end, outside linebacker. I mean, that's good. I mean, you can maybe surprise some teams a little bit and uh, make it harder on them from a blocking standpoint. So I like that. The, the one thing, though, that has shown that you want to try to figure out a way to get better, you got to make some impact plays to get off the field. And impact plays are you know, pressuring the quarterback, sacks, cause yes. fumbles. Yes. These are big plays that set an offense back. 
you know, because you always talk here about coaches on offense talking about we need to stay on pace. We need to make sure we don't get behind the down and distance. In other words, avoid the second and 15s, the second and 12s, you know, lost yardage plays. Those are all good plays, game changing plays for a defense. And you got to find a way to make some more of them as a defense. And I think that's going to be the challenge for this defense until you can get maybe, a, a, you know, one more dominant corner presence and also a dominant presence on the interior to pass rush. Let's get our weekly update on the strong safety battle logs. <laughs> there are co- four co-number ones on the depth chart again this week. Josh Jones, Jared Wilson, Rudy Ford, Andre Sisco. Where do you stand now, preseason well, week three? First of all, Rudy Ford made the tackle on the opening kickoff, and that's exactly what they brought him here to do was to first of all lead the way on special teams I think if he has to play safety I think he'll give you a solid player and also they played him at a linebacking position when they went to nickel Mm -hmm. but it was more of a dime look if he's out there and so uh that was cool to see and that was his first game action so what what they designed him to do he did exactly that that was good to see he was, think, my, he was my person to watch in the pregame show, which, by the way. Which was very nice. Thank you. Uh, my person Just to watch, unfortunately, was Travis Etienne. Well, we watched him, unfortunately. It, but it the, wasn't long. But the safety position, I, I'm serious when I say this. If you wanted to start Rudy Ford, okay. You want to start Jared Wilson, okay. You want to start Andre Sisco, okay. I'm good with uh, – you want to start Daniel Thomas. Yeah. I think they've got good safety depth. now. I think that Josh Jones has some limitations, but I still think he's a saw, he's an NFL caliber player. So this is going to be, in my opinion, this is going to be where other teams in the league are really focusing in on to watch this team, which will make this, in my opinion, the most interesting position that they have to cut because there are some good players in there. I'm not saying there's greatness in there. Maybe there is with a Cisco. But it's too early to tell. But there's some really good players in there. Let's come back in a moment. The final opportunity for guys to make a roster this week. The final cut coming up this coming Tuesday, down to 53. Jaguars game day broadcaster presented by Vistar Credit Union. And this is Jaguars Happy Hour on Jaguars Radio. We paid how much for those lessons? She's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, Can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? (sighs) Great job, honey. Oh. Oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. (sighs) A lot has changed in 60 years, but there's one thing that remains the same. Our commitment to our customers and to our community. There's no place like Jacksonville, and there's no place like Gate. Thank you for allowing us to serve you past, present, and future. Now through August 31st, Jags fans can enjoy two of your favorite roller grill items for just $2 at participating Gate locations. Get them while they're hot. Gate, serving up more. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer. All named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. Because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford SUVs. Drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 520. Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our Scrubbing Soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive.
just got to keep swinging, man. We're going to swing. The, I just told them I'm looking for uh, fighters and I'm looking for competitors. We will have a locker room full of competitors, and I, I think we got a bunch of them. Um, but I'm learning a lot about them, like they're learning, learning a lot about us. Keep swinging, baby. It's Jaguars Happy Hour. J.P. Shadrick, Jeff Lagerman. That was Urban Meyer, Jaguars head coach. Got to keep swinging, Ur- I mean, yeah. come on. And, uh, you're going to look for fighters, Logs. But not people that will literally swing. Oh, we no. don't need people fighting we're on not the field. playing hockey, no. I mean, we're not, you can't do that. That'd be pretty cool, though, wouldn't it? What? You just oh, get a five-minute penalty or something? Yeah. Like we need a penalty box in football. You like just, yeah, you play a penalty box and you play 11 on 10. <laughs> power play. The Jaguars are on a <laughs> fill-in-the-blank sponsor right? power play. Right. Right. I like it. I think it'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Not if you're a penalty uh There would be team. some guys that yeah. would, I can tell you, if it was legal in football, <laughs> you wouldn't see any of these quarterback <laughs> masks being worn by defensive linemen anymore. <laughs> You'd be seeing the old full face mask thing coming way down to protect from the uppercut. Final chance for a lot of guys this Sunday. Heading to Dallas, AT&T Stadium, the that big place in Arlington. League. What's that? Hockey comes to football. It could the new be. New Spring League. Maybe that is the next one coming up. <laughs> Uh, big game, of course, for a lot of guys. It's 80 men on the roster right now. It's got to go down to 53 next week on Tuesday. So here we go, an opportunity for a lot of guys. You know, here in Urban talk earlier this week, you know, guys that aren't game ready yet are going to go out there and play, it feels like. So you'll have some starters in this game, certainly early in the game. But the second half, it's guys that are on the bubble a lot of times here. Or, or the, sure. other, the other way to look at it, Logs, and maybe you can you know, give us your expertise on this, if you're on the roster, maybe you don't go out there in the second half. If you're a guarantee making the roster guy and, and not want to risk it. Now tell me why would that happen? Let, let's say there's a guy who's not a starter that you you don't want to put out there in the second half. May, what, give me a reason or, why. Or, okay, if he's not going to be on your roster, maybe you want to hide him exactly. and get him to the practice squad exactly. through waivers. That's, that's another thing that you have to consider, I think, as a coaching staff. And that, you know, we always kind of assume we don't really can, we, we don't think of it from that perspective, but I think you do in some respects because as a fan, you be, might be saying, hey, look, you know, might want that, how come they won't play Joe, Joe Schmo, that, you know, at, let's say left tackle, even though I'm just making up, it's obviously. And uh, the team's thought process might be, look, if we play Joe Schmo at left tackle in this game and he gets good film and they, all the other teams see, how good he is, we're not going to be able to sneak him on the practice squad. So maybe we ought to play Johnny because we know we don't want Johnny. Okay, We want to keep Joe Schmo, so we're going to play Johnny instead of Joe Schmo so we can hide Joe Schmo. I mean, that happens in the last preseason game so that teams don't get good tape out there on some guys so that they can find him a way to keep him on practice squad. And remember – the practice squad is important again this year. Oh, it's huge, yeah. Because the practice squad is essentially a part of your roster that you can elevate them from the practice squad to game day three times for any reason you want to. Uh, at that time, then you have to make a decision to make them active on your active roster or they're subject it's to waivers. two per game, right? You can do. No, no, no well, I'm just saying there's the, oh, one, yes. one person can be elevated three, three times, times during right. the season. Then if you do that after that, they have to be moved up to the active roster. Okay. So, uh, or subject, um, and once you they are brought up, then they can be grabbed at any time off your go. practice squad, or if they are on practice squad. So that's something to consider in the last game, I think, from the standpoint of, okay, because this is something that Urban Meyer hasn't had to worry about. No. I mean, this is something that Trent Baalke – has really not done before because Trent Baalke hasn't been a general manager in today's NFL. He was a few years ago with the 49ers. Yeah. And so, I mean, but he's kept up with all like the practices. Like he was in the building last year here. He was, so, yeah. So he's yeah. a little bit he's more he's familiar, familiar with it. But, but never I mean, had this, to, like, push the button. At, at so, the they, yeah, button. so this is kind of new. And so they're going to have to talk through that process and, and what they want to do from the standpoint of, okay, hey, look, we really need to look at it and get more of an evaluation on players C, D, and E because we, need, we only can keep two of them. 
So let's let all three of these guys play and let the best man win. Or do you say, you know what? Well, we got C, D, and E, and we want to be able to get E to the practice squad. So let's and we're going to keep C and D. So let's just play C and D, and E doesn't play. I mean, there's things like that that have to be worked out prior to the game kicking that's off. That's right. Yeah, because that's uh, coming up at uh, one o'clock. But but most importantly. Sunday. It was said this year, and it's dead on the money by a coach. He said, look, to get better, you have to practice football. You have to play football. And this team needs to continue to get better, especially as an offense. So Trevor Lawrence and his offensive mates need to play a little bit. I'm not saying they need to play the whole game. Some people say, oh, we well, don't put them at risk. No, they got to play. They got to get better. They got to find more chemistry. And I think the, the more that you can narrow down the people that Trevor Lawrence are working with, from a skill position standpoint, the better it will be for him. Just like we saw, remember Tom Brady? I've heard of him, yes. But remember when we watched him up in New England yes, that summer? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it was 2017, training camp. The one thing that stuck with me from watching him, first of all, his work ethic is unbelievable. Sure. The practice organization of Bill Belichick is second to none. Mm-hmm. But when Tom Brady steps on the field – he doesn't step on the field with anybody at the skill position. There are certain guys that he will work with and only certain guys. You have to earn the right to work with him in his mind and also the coach's mind. And the, the more you work with the people that you're going to be playing with, the more chemistry that you develop with them. So the faster that they make the determination of who they're going to keep and who's going to be playing – the more and, and sooner that they get them working with Trevor Lawrence, the better for Trevor Lawrence. Tonight, Jaguars All Access TV here in Jacksonville. Brett right? Martineau. I've heard of him. Tony Baselli. Uh, who? Tony Baselli. Oh, him, yeah. Uh, that's coming up tonight, 7 o'clock, right? 7 o'clock, yeah. On CBS 47 Me here in and Jacksonville. Bo and Bo and BMO. So we'll look forward to that. So, B, me, Bo. All BMO? That. Brett Martineau, that's what we call BMO. When you work with words, words are your work. Yeah, I'm not quite the wordsmith that Tony Baselli is, but I try. Who is? Uh, Logs, we'll talk to you, man. You Have a it. good one. Jeff. See you, uh, talk to you Sunday. Sunday, 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 and countdown to kick. One o'clock? One o'clock Eastern, kick, Eastern. At the best stadium in the National Football League. AT&T Stadium. Amazing place. In Arlington, Texas. We're back in a moment. The Football Performance Center has been approved. We'll touch on that. A little later, we'll hear from Bucky Brooks and Jeff Darlington of ESPN. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Radio Network. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk, checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk, checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy. Keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit MassageEnvy.com for more details. We paid how much for those lessons? Shh. She's doing great. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, Can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? (sighs) Great job, honey. Oh. Oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. It's been around longer than your quarterback. When you put it on, everyone knows it's game time. So legendary, it deserves its own Hall of Fame. Members only jackets, undeniable quality and style for over 45 years. Scratch and claw your way over to membersonly.com. Get ready for football season with a jacket that can only be summed up in one word, iconic. Use discount code Jaguars at checkout for 35% off on all iconic racer jackets. Members only, when you put it on, something happens. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars.
Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Radio Network. J.P. Shadrick with you. Our thanks to Jeff Logdeman. You can catch him tonight on Jaguars All Access Television in Jacksonville on CBS 47. Brent Martineau, Tony Baselli alongside tonight as well. Earlier this week, the Jacksonville City Council approved their part of the plan for the Football Performance Center. Just outside TIAA Bank Field, $60 million of the $120 million project. And in the uh, council meeting on Tuesday night, they read through the amendments again. Uh, the uh, There was no discussion and then opened the ballot. It was a 17 nothing vote in favor of the plan. The entire process Tuesday took about three or four minutes. But the work in the months leading up to that vote was deep. A long, tedious nights for a lot of folks on the staff from the planning part to the community events to explain uh, the, the plans for both the shipyards and the football performance center all around the community that happened uh, to the financial part, of course. Um, but this is, it feels like a moment you'll look back in 10, 15, 20 years and realize the importance of that vote Tuesday night, solidifying the Jaguars' commitment to downtown and northeast Florida. And it begins the process of looking at the stadium of the future for the Jacksonville Jaguars for the city and for the organization. And the uh, the ideas now and the commitments of the city and the organization are aligned with this vote. It's going to be a fantastic facility, obviously. A new football building, offices, um, lunchroom, uh, meeting rooms, athletic training space, a, a permanent locker room for the team, at least in their building there. And then uh, two practice fields outside, one inside that will be built as well. And it is going to be a a football factory, Shad Khan says he wants it to be, and that's what it will be. It will be fantastic. The goal is to have it opened and ready for the 2023 training camp. So the idea is to start construction right after the football season is over this year and about an 18-month turnaround, if all things go well, to get that ready to go for 2023 and beyond. But uh, the first step was Tuesday night and a good step. And it's, a, it's a really the beginning of what could be a fantastic little run here in downtown Jacksonville and around TIAA Bank Field. You can secure the best seats at the best price and become a Jaguars season ticket member. And you can do that today. Visit jaguars.com slash tickets or call 904-633-2000. Plenty ahead. We'll hear from Ben Bartsch when we come back. Jaguars offensive lineman and also Bucky Brooks, John Osier will join us as well to discuss Travis Etienne and what the Jags could do with his absence. This is Jaguars Happy Hour on Jaguars Radio. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Yingling traditional lager. The beer for drinkers who know how to tap into their inner eagle and spread their wings. So prepare yourself for takeoff and let your night take flight. When your lips meet that cold, crisp amber lager, there's no looking back. So fly over the radar. Tonight's about the lager, and this lager is all about soaring higher. Yingling, traditional lager. Spread your wings. DJ Yingling and Son, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please drink responsibly. Have you painted yourself for game day and dyed your pet's fur to match? Do you bleed your team's colors and deck your pet out in team gear? Do you plan game day watch parties for fellow sports lovers and their beloved pets? Then you are a rare breed. You are a pet fanatic, equal parts pet obsessed and diehard sports fan. At Pet Paradise, they're crazy about pets too. The official pet care provider of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Pet Paradise. It's a new day in pet care. Hi, folks. Frank Franzi here to tell you where to find the most authentic Southern pit barbecue in all of Jacksonville. That's right, Bono's. For 72 years, Bono's has been smoking real pit barbecue right here on the First Coast. Smoked for hours, served in minutes, and always cut to order. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at TIAA Bank Field. 
Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you want great barbecue, head to Bono's today. If you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. I think in our room, there's a lot of hard workers and everybody has really big goals and everybody in our room wants to win really bad. And uh, the way that we're going to do that is run the ball. So for us going forward, it's controlling what we can control every single day. Our film study, our communication, uh, our work ethic in the weight room, and we just control that. Second year offensive guard Ben Barch today after practice. And welcome back. It's Jaguars happy hour. J.P. Shadrick. Jeff Lagerman with us earlier. Uh, one note, by the way, Jaguars All Access TV is on Fox 30 television here in Jacksonville tonight, 7 o'clock. Still the same uh, cast of characters coming up tonight at 7, so check that out on Fox 30 here in Jacksonville. Travis Etienne Jr. done for the season. We discussed it earlier, the rookie running back out of Clemson. Plenty of discussion this week on who could fill those roles on offense. A conversation yesterday on Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks on Jaguars.com. John Osher and I got into Bucky's head about what the Jaguars lost. It's one of those things where you have big plans for a guy who's an explosive player, a big play threat, and you're not able to use him. And you know you spend the bulk of the offseason kind of planning a loose game plan with number one in mind. And now he's not here. Where do you make up that production? Where do you make up that explosiveness? You know, one of the things that the Jaguars could do is everyone's going to talk about the running backs and how they could fill it there. I think it provides more opportunity for LaVisca Le- Chenault to be a bigger factor in the offense, in the game plan, utilizing his skills because he was able to do a bunch of different things at Colorado that the Jaguars have yet to tap into. And I think it also creates a little bit of an opening for Tavon Austin if he is able to find his way onto the roster. He has some unique versatility things that you can do maybe putting him in the backfield, maybe using him as a gadget guy. I think we can get some opportunities for some other guys to kind of take some of the load that was going to be designated for Travis Etienne. Well, at the risk of repeating exactly what Bucky just <laughs> said, because I couldn't agree more. And I, uh, Tavon Austin, when, when Urban was asked about him, I didn't, Urban didn't say, hey, he's on the team. Sure made it sound like, yeah, this is going to be an opportunity for Tavon Austin. Chenault is an interesting fit for this. It's been interesting, JP. All off season, it felt like ETN and Chenault were sort of coming at the same job in from different directions. Meaning, Chenault was sort of the big guy, wide receiver, who could sort of be hybrid running back and wide receiver. ETN was the lightning quick running back, who also could sort of sort of do both. The interesting thing with Chenault. That position has always been in Urban Meyer's offense, speed and win one-on-one, one-on-one matchups by being able to lightning quick your guy and go all the way. I don't know that that's Chenault particularly. He's not really jitterbug. Yeah, or, right. That's right. Like that. But can they use him in a way that's still effective in that role? I think they can. And I do think it will provide a more opportunity for Chenault to be in that role. It'll look different than it would have with ETN but you can get some effectiveness. But as we talked about uh, for the show, JP, I don't think you just realistically go out and get Travis Etienne level talent. They drafted him because they thought he was special, really, really special. If they didn't think he was really, really special and above the X's and O's, you shouldn't have drafted him where you drafted him. So I thought Urban's comment about him, a blow to the jaw. Yep. Uh, the final thing in that comment, he said, we're still discussing how to... Re- how to address it, those aren't going to be happy discussions no, because no. I don't think you can find that. Yeah, and, you know, there's all this talk about the, the waiver wire, Bucky, and all that. They do have the first, um, in the order of the waiver claims, the first three weeks of the regular season. But there's a reason why those guys aren't on other teams anyway, right? I mean, there's only a limit to so much talent you'll find there. And also, let's keep in mind, James Robinson had a very productive rookie season. And so it may look a little different offensively than it would have looked with Travis Etienne, meaning it's more of a grinded out attack when James Robinson is spearheading the attack. And when you have he and Carlos Hyde somehow sharing the load, you don't get the explosive plays, but you could get the steady Eddie production 
in the running game if the offensive line, if they're doing their job. The X factor is who can make up for what Travis Etienne would have provided in the passing game. Not just the short passes coming out of the backfield, but what about the screen game? Because the screen game was going to be a prominent part of what the Jaguars did offensively. And so is that Tavon Austin coming in? Is this a by-committee approach where you utilize LaVisca Chenault, Tavon Austin, maybe even Philip Dorsett in some capacity? A lot to figure out. But the great thing is, after this last preseason game, you have an extended period of time to kind of put it together and figure it out. And so heading into week one, the Jaguars still should be able to put a nice plan in place for the first four games of the season to begin to kind of figure out what their offensive identity is and what it will be. That's from Huddle Up with Bucky Brooks, airing Wednesdays at 4 on Jaguars.com and Jags social media. Of course, since that show aired uh, today, Tavon Austin went down on the practice field and uh, parts of the athletic training staff were over there looking at him, sitting down on the ground, looking at his leg, and then Urban Meyer came over, gave him a big hug, a pat on the head, a long conversation. He walked off with the training staff. No further update as of right now from the Jaguars on Austin's condition, but I did not see him return to practice today. So a big question still, of course, uh, how will they fill that void? And we might not have an answer for a little while. They may not be able to, in fact, at the uh, running back spot and the, the position they had in mind for Travis Etienne. We're back in a moment. Jeff Darlington of ESPN joined Jags Drive Time this morning. We'll get his thoughts on Trevor Lawrence after his sit-down with the Jags quarterback on Monday Night Football. And it's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Radio Network. Jaguars fans, here's a great way to pay with pride wherever you go. Exclusively from TIAA Bank, the Jacksonville Jaguars Visa Debit Card comes with a fierce look and fantastic features, along with the convenience to make purchases online or at millions of locations worldwide. And it's yours, free, when you open a Yield Pledge checking account. Order yours today. Visit TIAABank.com slash JagsCard. TIAA Bank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC, and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. If something's been hurting, aching, or bothering you, don't ignore it any longer. It's time to take care of your health again. It's time to make an appointment with a Baptist Health primary care doctor or specialist. Call 904-202-4U to schedule a virtual visit or see a doctor in person at a Baptist Health location. The time for better health is here. Call 904-202-4YOU or visit GetBetterJacks.com. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer. All named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America. Because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford SUVs. Drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 520. I'm Urban Meyer, head football coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. New Horizons call for renewed vision, enhanced clarity, and an unparalleled willingness to block out the noise and distractions around you and simply focus on achieving greatness. Because getting one step closer to defining everyone's expectations isn't just about waiting for a window of opportunity. It's about creating it for yourself. It's about being a game changer, both on and off the field. And when we say we're all about renewal and achievement in Jacksonville, we mean it. That's why we've chosen to partner with Renewal by Anderson, official window and door replacement company of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yingli, traditional lager. The beer for drinkers who know how to tap into their inner eagle and spread their wings. So prepare yourself for takeoff and let your night take flight. Liptoff. When your lips meet that cold, crisp amber lager, there's no looking back. So fly over the radar. Cannonball. Tonight's about the lager, and this lager is all about soaring higher. Yingli, traditional lager. Spread your wings. DJ Yingling and Son, Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Please drink responsibly. Any repeated physical activity puts stress on the body. Checking your phone, getting in the car, sitting at your desk, checking the phone, getting in your car, sitting at your desk, checking your phone for the 50th time today. If you do anything with regularity, you should get massaged with regularity. Massage Envy, keep your body working. Regular body work makes the body work with massage, skin care, and stretch. Come in today for more information or visit massageenvy.com for more details. 
Welcome back. Jaguars Happy Hour continues on this Thursday afternoon. J.P. Shadrick with you. Jeff Lagerman in, in with us earlier. You can catch him tonight on Jaguars All Access Television in Jacksonville on Fox 30. Quarterback, of course, the talk of the town this week. Uh, the number one pick, of course, in many ways, is the talk of the NFL. Uh, some others in the draft this year outside Trevor Lawrence have some gaudier stats in the preseason, but Lawrence has uh, shown why. At times, he's the number one overall pick, of course. And on Jaguars Drive Time this morning on Jaguars.com, ESPN's Jeff Darlington visited with Ashwin Sullivan, John Osher, and Brian Sexton to discuss the quarterback and how it could look around here in year one. Here in the building, we always talk about how confident, how poised, and really just how normal Trevor Lawrence is to have this spotlight on him. Did, Did you get the same impression? Yeah, that's a great way of putting it. Um, and it's it's exactly the way I felt. That was my first time um, meeting Trevor or being around him. And, you know, when you actually get the chance to be in his presence, you feel this very refreshing vibe, this very kind human, uh, very humble human. But at the same time, a guy who really does have a presence about him. And you could say, well, every all 32 quarterbacks in the NFL probably have that. They really don't. Um, there's something about Trevor that is this quiet confidence that... Um, I mean, I dare say that the closest that it reminds me of, and this is going to feel like hyperbole, but it's Tom Brady, uh, a guy who is so kind, so warm and friendly, but at the same time, you're like, damn, that's Tom Brady. You know, you feel that with Trevor, you feel his, his presence. And I, I think that that that's meaningful, not only in an environment that we were in, but more meaningful in a locker room or a meeting room where you're going to get the attention of your teammates the second you walk in that room. What are your thoughts on the Jaguars, Jeff? I mean, we talked about Trevor. I know you haven't uh, gotten into them over here at training camp, but you've seen them a little bit. Yeah. What are your thoughts overall in the season? Well, I- I'm very glad that he is now um, named the starter. Um, I think that was slightly overdue in terms of just getting them first team reps. Uh, I felt that you know, talking to Trevor when we were sitting down, one of the things that he said was. Um, I think that we can win faster than I think. I think it doesn't take as long to to get there as maybe other people do. And I've talked to Urban a lot about that. How we're going to win and we're going to win fast. We don't need to be on a five year plan. And that starts with the quarterback. Well, to that I would say, and we now see it. Like, okay, let's get there. If you're going to get there, you got to get those first team reps. Got to get that cohesiveness with the the first team offense. You got to get that chemistry. That is more important to me than the benefit of. Um, pretending to try to convince a guy that he's got to earn the job. Trevor Lawrence earned that job the second he was drafted first overall. And I know we're past that. It's not a debate anymore. He's now the starter. I guess my point is when it comes to the Jags offense, now we can start to see them get the chemistry that they're going to need to get, the identity. And again, I'm not overly worried about that either. Uh, I, I think that that is what this time of year is for. I can't tell you how many times I've seen a team look good in the preseason the opposite of this. And then, and then they look like crap in the regular season. <laughs> it's like you showed all you, you were so worried about trying to look good in the preseason. And it's like, just get to the regular season, then show your cards, then create your identity. And sometimes that takes time too. It's a new NFL head coach. It's a new quarterback. These things take a little bit of time. And, uh, and I think that that's okay. That's Jeff Darlington, ESPN, a former NFL Network reporter, the beat writer for the uh, Dolphins for the Miami Herald back in the uh, late uh, first decade of the 2000s, so uh, 06 to 11, and uh, very good at his job, of course, Jeff Darlington. He uh, had that interview with Trevor Lawrence right before Monday Night Football, got to sit down with the Jaguars quarterback, and uh, he was on Jaguars Drive Time this morning, the full conversation available on the Jaguars official podcast network, the audio version, and on jaguars.com. Check out the video version or check out Jaguars Twitter or, or Jaguars YouTube. It's all over Jaguars social media channels. PRI Productions, the Southeast full service event company, has everything you need to bring your next idea to life. Visit PRIproductions.com and learn more. We'll wrap it up after this. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on Jaguars Radio. We paid how much for those lessons? She's doing great. Oh yeah, totally. Uh, Can you pass me a Pepsi Zero Sugar? (sighs) Great job, honey! 
Oh. Oh, look at that. That's not the end. No way. Now it's time for the encore. You know what? You're right. Five times? Not enough times. For everyone who traded in rock concerts for their kids' recitals, you've compromised enough. Pepsi Zero Sugar. That's what I like. <sighs> Scrubbing soon to a location near you. You know and love the Scrubble Stars at the Town Center, Fleming Island, and Atlantic Beach. Now get ready for four new locations scrubbing soon this year, featuring Kernan, San Jose, Racetrack Road, and Oakleaf. Give your car the glitz and glam it deserves at the best car wash in town with free car prep, vacuums, window cleaner, and more. You can also catch us at every Jags home game and cool down at the Scrubby's Misting Arch. Drive in to see us now and in the future at our Scrubbing Soon locations. Scrubbles, trust the bow tie. You'll know quality once you arrive. It's been around longer than your quarterback. When you put it on, everyone knows it's game time. So legendary, it deserves its own Hall of Fame. Members only jackets, undeniable quality and style for over 45 years. Scratch and claw your way over to membersonly.com. Get ready for football season with a jacket that can only be summed up in one word, iconic. Use discount code Jaguars at checkout for 35% off on all iconic racer jackets. Members only, when you put it on, something happens. At ViStar, we believe in better. Better convenience, so members can bank any way they want, whether it's at a branch, on a mobile device, or at one of more than 20,000 surcharge-free ATMs across North America, because we believe that people have better things to do with their time. If you believe that convenience is better, join ViStar. Visit ViStarCU.org. All loans subject to approval, insured by NCUA. A lot has changed in 60 years, but there's one thing that remains the same. Our commitment to our customers and to our community. There's no place like Jacksonville, and there's no place like Gate. Thank you for allowing us to serve you past, present, and future. Now through August 31st, Jags fans can enjoy two of your favorite roller grill items for just $2 at participating Gate locations. Get them while they're hot. Gate, serving up more. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we built the SUVs of the future for everyone, like Ford Escape, Edge, or Explorer, all named 2021 IIHS top safety picks with specific headlights. One of the many reasons why Ford has the freshest lineup of SUVs in America, because the SUVs of the future aren't built for a few. They're built for America. Ford SUVs, drive one today. When equipped with available LED headlamps based on auto source incorporated data obtained on 10 520. Welcome back. It's Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Radio Network. Final moments. Glad you're along with us this afternoon. J.P. Shadrick with you. And the uh, Jaguars face the Dallas Cowboys in preseason week three. Sunday, 1 o'clock kickoff time from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. We'll go on the air on the network at 12 noon with countdown to kickoff. We'll hear from Fred Taylor. We'll hear from head coach Urban Meyer. The final word with the head coach before kickoff and plenty of analysis getting you ready for that football game. A lot going on this week, of course. Trevor Lawrence, if you've just joined us, has been named the starting quarterback for the Jaguars this season by Urban Meyer. That happened officially on Wednesday. And Meyer said, you know, it's three weeks to the regular season. It felt like the right time. That was kind of always in his head. He said that this would be the time to do it. Make it a competition early in camp. Give Gardner Minshew an opportunity to work with the first team still. He, he gave him that uh, his word that he would do that, and they followed through and did that. And you could tell, though, after the first couple of preseason games, the difference. And Trevor Lawrence is now the quarterback. So you can move forward and game plan this week and get ready and put that first team offense out there, or most of it at least, and try to get something positive going early in the game and hopefully find the end zone. They haven't done that as a first team offense yet and uh, have some positivity going into the final game. Now, of course, it is the final game, so the final cuts are Tuesday from 80 down to 53, and there are a lot of anxious guys on this team that might have their last opportunity, maybe not just here, but maybe in the NFL. It's the way it works. The old cliche is there are 31 other teams that watch the tape, and that is absolutely true. Uh, Jihad Ward said it best, really, there's no such thing as a 53-man roster. Because you can slide to the practice squad. Guys come and go all year long, but it is a big moment. Coming up Sunday, 
Our thanks to Joe Fortunato on the audio side, Brent Reber on the video side, Trent Padilla as well. Jeff Lagerman joining us earlier on the program. For everyone involved, this is J.P. Shadrick. We will catch you Sunday ahead of the Jaguars and the Dallas Cowboys in preseason week three. Thanks for listening to Jaguars Happy Hour on the Jaguars Radio Network.